Good, Good morning, morning everyone. Welcome to another Tuesday. Uh, today our reading is from Job chapter 2. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> On another day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came with them to present himself before him. And the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Skin for skin, Satan replied. A man will give all he has for his own life. But now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, <clears throat> The Lord said to Satan, Very well then, he is in your hands, but you must spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. When Job's three friends, El Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophor the Na Naamite, I think. Na Namathite, That's it. That'll do. <laughs> heard about all the troubles that had come upon him, they set out from their homes and met together by agreement to go and sympathise with him and comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognise him. They began to weep aloud, and they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him, because they saw how great his suffering was. Job is a bit of a weird book, actually. It's kind of confusing, or at least it was until I kind of got some sort of understanding of it. <laughs> uh, and so the very, very brief summary is this. Uh, in the first two chapters, uh, we learn some of who Job is, who his family uh, are, and the discussion between Satan and God. Uh, and then we spend most of the book of Job listening to him chat with his friends uh, as they try and comfort him. Uh, so the general Elphaz, Bildad and Zophar, or something like that. Oh, well uh, <laughs> they try and comfort him and encourage him and sympathise, empathise with him. But um, at times they do good jobs, and I think for most of it they don't. So it's just sort of that discussion between um, Job and them. Uh, and then the last few chapters are my favourite. Uh, and Job, in all his complaining, then God speaks to him. And the little title above, I think, it, uh, chapter 39 or 38, it says, The Lord Speaks. Oh. And you, you don't want it to start with that, do you, when wow. you're, the, you're the one he's talking to. Uh, and this is what he said. <laughs> this, is, this is a great quote, if ever I've heard one. Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. <laughs> uh, now, I haven't got any reverb and my voice isn't that deep, but if it was, <laughs> that would be even more, even That'll better. Be cool, it? <laughs> Maybe I'll have to edit that in. Um, and what follows for me is one of the most humbling parts of the Bible, I think, um, as God basically outlines who he is, his greatness, his magnificence. Um, <clears throat> where were you when I marked off the world's dimensions and foundations? Um, and so that's very humbling for me, as I'm sure it was for Job as well. Uh, so that's the very brief sort of outline. Uh, but in our passage today, we see Job is targeted by Satan. God says there is no one on earth like Job, that he is blameless and full of integrity. And Satan and God come to this agreement that Satan may harm Job but not kill him. Job is then incredibly ill, and to the extent that his friends didn't even recognise him, and Job's wife tells him to curse God and die. But Job replies saying, don't be foolish. Shall we accept good from God but not trouble? In everything that happened to Job though, in all the arguments with his friends and with God, he did not sin. In all that he faced, he did not sin. Uh, in the previous chapter, he says to God, uh, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And I think the amazing thing that we can learn from Job is this attitude that he has, his integrity and attitude in the midst of suffering. He suffered as much as any human can suffer with his family and uh, his extreme wealth being taken away, uh, as well as his health completely deteriorating. And yet he, he remained a man of integrity and without sin. 
He continued to praise God in his suffering, uh, but also argued with God and wrestled with him. He didn't understand exactly why the suffering was taking place, but to be honest, it didn't really matter. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter why, because he knew that God was faithful and that God was God. Uh, and as we find out at the end of Job, that God is God. <laughs> uh, his conviction for, be for God being on his side is really inspiring uh, for me. Mm. Um, after the attack of the Twin Towers, <clears throat> Matt Redman wrote the song, Blessed Be Your Name. Um, it's often sung as quite a happy and joyous song because it, it sounds happy and mm. joyous, doesn't it? But um, it was actually written as a lament song and the words in it, um, if you sort of look at them, they are mm. quite lamenty. Um, so we sang this at our old church um, the Sunday after one of our worship leaders and close friends just suddenly passed away. Um, completely unexpectedly as well. So we were all sort of, the whole church was really, mm. wasn't it? It was, it was really sad. Um, but for, for us, its lyrics really sort of encompass the story and the attitude of Job. Um, and we sing this song with, uh, we can sing this song with tears in our eyes, but still find comfort that God is good. Um, so when we bless God's name together, regardless of our circumstance, we become like Job, a man who was blameless and full of integrity, a man who fears God and shuns evil. So you might enjoy listening to the song now, um, or not, but... It's one of our favourites, yeah. so yeah. Have a good week. Have a great Tuesday. See you soon. Bye. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name. When I'm found in the desert place Though I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise And when the darkness closes in, Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, I'll say. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name 
of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. 